Hello, everybody. Josh here. We're finally, 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 finally back. It's um, been a little bit, but uh, thank you all for being patient. And uh, if you've missed us and now you're super excited because we got a brand new show coming for you, there's a great way to uh, help promote and help support the show and that is go to our patreon page for as little as a dollar an episode you can help support inner brews and help promote uh great houston area and beyond craft beer and uh thank you for your support and now enough of me just yammering (laughs) on let's get in to the show the following is a presentation of stewed productions that's where you introduce yourself was i clear I don't know if I wasn't very clear on that. That's okay. All good. Yeah, Clay Wicker here with Cyclers Brewing. And this is Abby Wences. Yay. Oh, this is, uh, we're doing interviews. Let's hit that. This <laughs> is I'm rusty too. <laughs> I'm 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 pretty rusty. It's, it's I haven't me. listened to one of your podcasts in a while, so I got to get back up it, to snuff. Man, it is. This is episode 215. Josh, seriously? Yeah, it's been coming up on eight years. Of doing the podcast. I mean, when was the first time we were out here? It was five, six, yeah, five, about five years ago. Five years ago, free freezing our. Well, we've been at a couple <laughs> times. The first time just yeah. you and me up there. It was, we were up top freezing. I think. Yeah, it was cold, and yeah. then we were out another time. It's, that's been a while too. So it's been. I think the last time we did it, you we had uh, some of our CrossFit people out here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of, you guys are both looking really fit. <laughs> Good. Is deal. it just from hefting around full like? barrels of spent grains and all that or you know, uh, i mean i see there's weights over there y'all y'all are jacked well y'all i tell great. you we it's uh <laughs> it's everybody that's in the beer business knows that's a lot of work it yeah. definitely is and there's yeah, some things people, that we most do, people though. aren't as they don't they're not looking as fit there's something about it, the montgomery county water or something or, i don't it's, know uh, it's probably the beer is it it's just yeah. the, whatever y'all put in the beer it's just we make sure we we have a lot of protein in our beer yeah you also uh, <laughs> Y'all, if you make a juicy IPA, it's not. Is that just? I don't know. It's, that's a steroid joke, everybody. I don't know. That's. I'm just kidding. There's no performance enhancers here. Just good, clean beer. Uh, man, we didn't. Should we have a? Should we have a beer? I think you should. Okay. I'll, you well, know what? You've got a list there in front of you to to take a look at. I know. Uh, it was. It's been. You got 18 here on the list. We do. It's. Uh, y- y'all have been busy. We actually have. Uh, <laughs> since the last time you were out, uh, we're open more to the public. Of course, we do a lot of athletic events out here. We yeah. kind of cater to the CrossFit community and, of course, the cycling community, which is our genre. But uh, we're doing a lot of those types of things, but we do have the public out. And, you know, as you well know, there's there's a lot of diversity out there, so we're just keeping up with the diversity. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, I mean, that's the coolest thing about beer. I mean, well, it's not the coolest thing. It's one of the coolest parts, right? Is like somebody says, well, I don't really like beer. It's like, well, what does that mean? There's so much beer. There's so many different flavors. There's so many different styles. And I always find it really interesting when I go into a grocery store and I, I just watch people in front of the cooler. Mm-hmm. And they'll sit there with their arms crossed and they'll kind of look down one way and look down the other way. And they'll just they'll stand there because uh-huh. they really have no idea what they're going to pick up. It's, it's more of a spontaneous decision. You know, I'm, but I'm that way. I, I've been, I think we all are. Yeah. I go and I'm like, you know, my wife will call. Like, she's doing the grocery shop. I was like, what do you want? I was like, oh, gosh. I don't know. And we'll be on the phone for the next 30 <laughs> minutes as she's doing all the rest of the shopping. Like, okay, I'll, I'll be back by here again. Make, try thinking about it. And I'll sit there and think, like, what are we going to eat? Now, what? Abby, on the other hand, though, that's a little different. You know, he's, he's into the juice craze and yeah. loves all those things. And constantly he's looking to try out new things here at the brewery. So uh, definitely different on that end. I've I've had some pretty good beers and some pretty bad beers, but <laughs> you know the important thing is to try it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. That the juicy beers, man. I at first I was a little bit resistant. This is a fad. It's not a fad. It's it's its own style now, and some of them like are just straight up delicious. You know, yeah. it's just it's just good, right? They are. They're really good. I mean, who would have thought? course years ago you know when we were brewing and we had hazy cloudy beers (laughs) that it would evolve into that style today of course more complex yeah obviously but uh some some really good stuff yeah yeah it's um i i don't know it's not going anywhere and it's just they're they've become an art form in and of themselves you know it's there's 
And they're even within like the juicy, hazy, whatever, there's different interpretations now. We're starting to see it's starting to branch a little bit here and there. So it's like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what the future holds, but I'm, I'll drink it, whatever it is. <laughs> well, that's it. And that's it. So take a look over that list. Anything sits your fancy there. But, uh, you uh-huh. know, we've got a new Citra Pale. Uh, it's a pale ale that we have on tap, something nice and easy to start with. Uh, of course, our domestique is on. We've got a nice oak-aged saison. Mm. It's on, too, to start out. Mm. Then lots yeah. of other things. The IPO should be new since last time it was Yeah, here. I don't know if you had our, our India Pale Lager last time you were out. I but don't it's think a, so. It's our saddle time. It's, it's an IPA, but I actually made with a lager yeast and has some German hops in it. So really okay. nice and hoppy. Really good for the... The nice sunny weather. Okay. Well, I'll do that. I'll start with the log with the IPL. Okay. Saddle time. Well, really good. Okay. Let you and Abby chat, and I'm gonna grab it for you. Okay. Um, Abby, man, how long have you been working here? It's been pretty much since we opened. Yeah. We started off over there in that little porch yeah. by the pool, and then it's just a hobby that got bigger and bigger. <laughs> what are we? Six years in? Five? Seven? How many? How long? Um, probably close to seven or eight. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, Man, it's it, it. This is it's this is one of those episodes when I'm was driving out. I was just like, oh man, you know, it, it kind of hits me, like especially when I hit the forest. It's like, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> this reminds me, the first couple of times I came out here, first I wasn't, you know, finding the find, place, yeah, finding yeah. it was like, um, yeah, it's like I've never I'd never been out in this area. It's beautiful out here. This is, it's like it just it's in the middle of the wood, like literally in the middle of the woods, and it's just like picturesque and peaceful and you're like if you're in houston and you come out here it's just completely anti-city away from the city and um thank you thank you it's like a perfect uh 10 15 a.m beer right there uh, yeah. maybe we should have started on with the breakfast down mm-hmm. that's right that's all good i did have I'm, it's going to be an interesting day today yesterday I, I made the last of the coffee i was like mental note grab some coffee before the end of the day and i didn't because mental notes never work you should write that stuff down pro tip and so no coffee this morning Ooh. so i'm going on pure journaling oh okay so we'll all see. right <laughs> we'll see what I, hopefully the, the caffeine stores in my system will kick in you know hopefully i don't know if that's how it does that but i'm hoping it does because normally i'm two cups in at this point <laughs> and my eyes are doing yeah you know, that kind of thing so now it's just we'll see it's just pure excitement to come to see you guys great hmm. That's good. Crisp, hoppy. It's everything you want. Really crisp. Not too many India Pale lagers out there. Probably the biggest reason is it. Uh, it's a time thing. Mm-hmm. It takes quite a bit of time to produce a beer like that. To get the clarity, to get the crispness. Uh, it's got a lot of action in it, as you can see. So uh, we really enjoy it, though. It's worth the wait. How long does this beer take you to make? Typically, this one, we're between seven and eight weeks. Okay. On that one. So, I mean, obviously, our, our fermentation time uh, is four to five days. Mm-hmm. Then it goes to secondary. And then after that, you know, we're we're slowly dropping the temperature to get it down to lagering temperatures. And it just sits there. And what, then it just does it things. What temperature do you lager it at? Generally, we're right around 42 degrees. Mm-hmm. So, uh, right at the end, about the last week, we'll drop it down to about 32 degrees. Yeah and hold it there that's really nice uh, it's kind of interesting though because with a lager uh, right before your fermentation is finished you actually need to raise the temperature back up okay. in order to get rid of some unwanted flavors mm. uh, let the yeast kind of do its thing and then take it back down to lagering temperature so it's just a lengthy process yeah no I didn't I didn't realize that mm-hmm. that's a um, pro tip there uh, my partner in crime on the other show liquid lunch Kennedy just finished up doing his very first lager he's you know i got him into home brewing and he's taken off just home brewing all the time and he did his first lager and he just kept going on about how long it took so kennedy i know you're listening raise that temp what oh so you're at 42 what did you bring it up to yeah well I, you know we we typically start out in the mid 50s okay that's where we start out to get everything activated and going uh generally we hold it there for a couple of days take it down to around 45 to 46 and then when everything when our numbers are right, that's when we let it gradually rise over a period of days. Summertime, it doesn't take that long yeah. in our environment. Yeah. Wintertime's a little bit more interesting as to methods we have to use to raise the temperature back up. Yeah, but yeah just to stand around and hug. 
That's it. <laughs> have a group hug there. Just use that body heat. Yeah. Get the dogs to hang out. Actually, we have lights and things that we use that we put on the tanks. Really? And uh, that helps. Of course, you know, we turn our coolant off and things. Okay. Yeah, you got to make it happen. That's that's kind of the uh, the calling card of craft brewing. It's been from the very beginning, you know. It's like that's make it happen. When, uh, what was it, Ken Grossman, he had to make his own equipment out of old dairy equipment, right? Yeah. So There's a lot of brewers out there that still do use dairy equipment. I see a lot of them come across the, uh, you know, the brewer sites mm -hmm. for tanks for sale. And a lot of people gobble them up and still use them. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Um, I think we're going more towards, you know, the smaller, you know, neighborhood brewers, and it kind of lends itself to that, which, you know, that's, I mean, to speak to, you know, when you first opened, what were you, you were number, I'm, I'm calling you Houston area, so were, I think you were seven, six or seven? I believe so. Taught, you're, yeah, there weren't, it was you and just a handful of other people, and yeah. that was... Sp I, I know there was St. Arnold, I think uh, Carbach had just opened... Uh, I, think that put you, I think you were six. Yeah. There were a couple of other ones. I think uh, I think Southern Star was open. No Label, maybe. No Label was right there, I believe. Maybe. And, Buffalo uh, Bayou, maybe? Who? Buffalo Bayou? It was right around. I think we were right around the same time. Yeah, yeah. It was all right there. And, you know, then, you know, now it's like when you drive out here, yes, you get into the forest and, and, and it takes you away from all kinds anything city it's just trees like driving onto your property you look at it and it's like man i just want to i just want to park my car and just walk into those trees <laughs> and just sit and commune with with nature and that's that's what's so fun when we have people out uh to the brewery and they're able to come visit us we have tents set up everything set up uh people bring their own goodies and whatnot but it's just a totally different brewery feel yeah so if you want to chill out and enjoy the surroundings. We're surrounded by the Sam Houston National Forest. Mm. Uh, got some great beer on tap. Uh, just a totally different brewery feel. There's a lot of great breweries out there that have their own identity, and this is ours. Yeah, it, it really, 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 really is. I mean, you can't, I can't stress that enough. It's, this is completely unique. And I don't know, people get, people in town, I hear you, ones that are most vocal on social media and stuff, right? I don't know, it's like, Take a second and look around and then step outside. I mean, it's not far. Yeah. You know? Um, well, as a plug, October the 12th, we'll, we'll, we'll be open. So make your plans. That's a Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. Yeah. October the 12th. Uh, I believe it's that's Saturday after this one coming. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah a week from Saturday. So, yeah, I'll, I'll get this show posted today, which is today's the third, second, third, mm -hmm. third, second, third, it's second, second. October. October. Yeah, yeah, second of October. I can't cannot, believe it. Cannot believe it. I know, right? Get the pumpkin beers ready. Get the pumpkins all put out and whatever. I've already Interesting. Yeah, we do have our uh, we have our balked pumpkin that's yeah. ready. It's uh, our 2019 <laughs> version. Yeah. Uh, we aged it on oak and cinnamon fireball. Really? So uh, a lot going on in there. Uh, profound oaky taste to it. Yeah. And uh, you get that nice warmth after you swallow. So. Cool. Yeah. Something a little different for the fall. Is that, are you bottling that one this year or is that? Actually, uh, we are not bottling it. We were going to, uh -huh. but uh, we have a lot of keg orders. Yeah. So well, we kind of had to halt that this time. It's it's a unique, I think that's probably the way to go with, you know, with the, the pumpkin beers. Because it just seems to be that, one, the marketing for pumpkin beers was really, really strong and then not strong. So it's like whoever does marketing for Big Pumpkin. I don't know who it. I guess Big Pumpkin <laughs> as a marketing <laughs> team. They push it really, really, really hard, and yeah. they start really early, early. When people get burnt out, and they're like, "Oh, they're all the same," but then it's like, "No, no, no, hold on. Let the let the people that mess up the marketers that mess up everything. Let them let them do their thing with the whatever. But come back and try. You know, like Bonked or you know Pumpkinator or what, you know, whatever. I think it capitalizes too on our emotions as we head into fall. Yeah. I mean, you know, we. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've had great IPAs. We've had all of these different diverse styles, and now we're going into fall. Yeah. So we're ready for. We we see the leaves changing. Uh, our beers start to change for a little bit. I yeah. do find with pumpkin beers though, it's split right down the middle. People yeah. absolutely cannot stand them, yeah. or they love them. Yeah. And there's not real, really a lot of middle ground that we've noticed. Abby, where do you stand on pumpkin beers? Pumpkin. Is it? Um, either way. Yeah, yeah. I'm the same way. I, it's either I like it or. 
there's, don't like there's it. some that are amazing, and there's some that are like, what else you got? <laughs> this, yeah. and, but when they're amazing, when they when they hit it right, like yours hits it right. When it hits it right, it's it's like, okay, this is what I look forward to, and, yeah. it's, and it's worth searching those out and making a list, and not falling prey to the first one you see out there necessarily. It, I mean, unless it could be a good one, but you know. They start putting those things out, I think, mid-July. I don't know. <laughs> That's it. It gets uh, earlier. With the pumpkin beers, sometimes they're, like, too light. They don't have enough flavor, so they're yeah. kind of watered down to yeah. me. Mm-hmm. Or they have too many spices, mm-hmm. so you kind of lose the pumpkin. You don't really know what you're drinking. Yes. It's a it's a body thing. It's a, yeah, balance to body to spice to, I don't know. Like, I even think a bunch of different styles can go. You can, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I've ever seen, a, like, a pumpkin IPA. Anybody done the pumpkin IP? I don't know. I haven't heard I'm of sure it. There's one somewhere. So yeah, somebody, right? Somebody's Sounds bound to me. have a, one. A hazy pumpkin. Yeah, that's even better. <laughs> yeah. I know. Do you have one? No, I don't. I, it's like a juicy, citrusy. I just made some uh, this past weekend. I'm trying to do a different like fall dish each weekend, and I made a. It was like a pumpkin orange soup, and so those flavors will go together. Pumpkin orange, the little bit of the pumpkin. It wasn't much though, but it was. Yeah, it could work. Yeah, I remember uh, it's been, I don't know, a year or two ago, and I think they still make it, but uh, brewery out of Col- Colorado, Avery, mm-hmm. they made a, it was a barrel-aged pumpkin, and it was called Rumpkin. Yes. And they aged it on rum barrels, and it was it was phenomenal. Yeah. It's probably the best, hands-down, pumpkin beer I've ever had. That one's good. So I had one from, I don't know that they still make it again, but uh, Five Stones out of uh, San Antonio, or not San, they're right near San Antonio, Um uh, Cibolo, I don't know. Cibolo, I mean, uh, maybe that's where they. Are. I don't know. Anyway, Five Stones. They uh, they had a smoked pumpkin, huh? And it was the smoke and the pumpkin mm-hmm. and all that. It worked. Well, you know, at the end of the day, I think whether it's pumpkin beers or any other beers, uh, as humans, we're very subjective. Mm-hmm. So with our food, uh, with our beers, with whatever. Yeah. I mean, some people absolutely like some things, and some people don't. Yeah. So. That's what's so great about our industry that you have so much to choose from. Mm-hmm. So if you go into fall, there's going to be an array of pumpkin beers, yeah. just like there's an array of hazy juices and IPAs, and you're going to find something that you like. Well, what do y'all spice your the bonk? What do you spice it with? We actually use a unique process. Um, but we put a little bit of spice in our brewing process, mm-hmm. but we actually dry hop it like an IPA. Oh. So uh, Tina puts that blend together. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's an array of clove, cinnamon, allspice, nutmeg, a little brown sugar. We also, here at the brewery, for those that visit the brewery, uh, she has a, a rim teaser that she's made up. So people get their, their rim teased with the, the pumpkin. Oh, so you're just able to have the whole experience. And yeah. then look at the leaves change, too. <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah, out here, you're going to get it full blast, right? Yeah. It's... I, I feel like we're, what, two weeks away from maybe starting to see Well, little, maybe this so-called cool front next week. Spark a little something. It was cooler today. Yeah. I think, yeah. what, 77, something like that? Yeah. I mean, it seems cool. The humidity has been high lately, yes. and it's, like, extra sweaty. You know, it's like, no, it doesn't matter what you do. It's just like, this is, it's like, it's like, like. The Earth and Houston saying, don't forget where you live. Yeah, exactly. It's about to be nice, but don't forget. So here's this big smack of humidity. One nice thing about up here is typically we're always probably about five, what do you think, Abby? About five degrees cooler than downtown Houston Yeah, up here, always, whether it's in the evening or it's midday. Yeah. Well, one, you've got the shade. And I, what I've noticed, like, when I'm out doing taking walks, when you're walking by trees, there's, like, a coolness that comes off in the, like, late afternoon. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I bet you get a bunch of that. And then, yeah, you are further north. And, yeah, this is just peaceful. And on this side of the, the brew house, the sun hits that other side. Because when I walked around and you were moving at a frantic pace, you're super <laughs> fast. I was like, man, I can't keep up with Clay. It's like, I'll just walk around over there and get him. And... You were already on the other side by the time yeah. I got to that side. He has to count his steps. That's it. Yeah. Is that what you're doing? Are you keeping up with it? Oh, I'm trying. How many how many steps a day are you aiming for? Actually, I, it was a joke. I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> you look I, like you're in that, I don't know, fifteen to 20,000 range. I, I don't know. I really don't know. You know, we have that app, too, on the phone, but I never look at it. But uh-huh. actually, what we've been trying to work for, towards, if you will, uh you know, next week starts the CrossFit Open. 
Yeah. And uh, it's a worldwide event that we're, we're pretty heavily involved with, with the brewery and also as individuals. So uh, pretty, pretty unique event as far as fitness goes and from a functional fitness standpoint mm-hmm. for people. A lot of people, you know, think of CrossFit and they're kind of, oh, I don't want to do that. But it's really designed, the intent of it was designed to help us do things that we do on an everyday basis without getting hurt. Yeah. So, you know, whether you're picking something up at home, taking the trash out, pulling something off of the stove, uh, that's the intent of it. And the embarrassing thing is you can get injured doing those things. <laughs> that's right. If you sit on your butt all day long like I do, I what I've learned, that's been the main thing is like just stand up every once in a while. That's a starter. Um, but don't ignore it because, like, I've had back issues. Like, my first back issue when I was 23, we decided to do slip and slide at a fourth of july party and it turns out it had been about 15 years prior to that since i'd done my last slip and slide and i was about 120 pounds heavier than i was when i was 11 or whatever it was and your body doesn't react the same when it hits the ground over and over again (laughs) when you're an adult and so i had a back you know back issues for like the weekend after that i was like oh that really hurts and then it was fine and then every you know it was like two years later oh i did it again you know like just standing in the in the weight rack you know getting ready to pick up an easy curl bar and it just like my back just kind of like, you know Ooh. and it's like okay that doesn't seem right well a couple days later i'm fine anyway smash cut to now 39 just turned 39 and a back injury i just i don't didn't really do anything i mowed the yard or something and i'm out for like two weeks my goodness and it's because i you know you don't i didn't take the time way back after slip and slide to do my slip and slide fitness routine i should have stretch you have to stretch before you slip and slide you really do right I mean, that's, you know, from your well, lips to God's ears, it's true. Yeah, it's you know, our half barrels out here, it's 165 pounds. All right. I'll so, I mean, to, or something. To, move, <laughs> to move those things around, you don't just go grab one no, and yeah. pick them up. Yeah, so. you got to brace your core. That's, that's the it. thing I've had to work, core strength, hip flexors. I need some hip flexor flexibility when your flexors aren't flexible. It's hard to do all those other big movements. The CrossFit community, they're very uh, astute towards craft beer, too. Yes. Yeah, they they work very hard. It's a family uh, oriented event and uh you know they uh, they enjoy something nice afterwards yeah well i mean think about all the health benefits the love bugs are back the uh all the health benefits uh, of craft beer i mean it's full of like antioxidants it's got uh was it tetra tetracycline was one that they found in mummies in from egypt back in the day mm-hmm. that the only way they could they didn't know about antibiotics the only way they could have done it was from beer so we realized tetracycline which is mm-hmm. great for you uh Hops are, well, they help you sleep. I don't know if, like, drinking them helps you sleep, but I know they used to make hot pillows, right? It's supposed to be Good. soothing. That explains it. Every time I drink an IPA, I get sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeast is full of uh, antioxidants and all kinds mm-hmm. of good stuff. Something that's good for your bones? Yeah. The, Sil- silicone? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, the, the moderate amount of alcohol in a beer compared to, say, you know, other drinks that may, people may overindulge in is that, it helps actually lubricate your arteries and flushes out, you know, that's some of the, the bad things because it, it gets you, you know, it can also help hydrate, you know, in moderation. There's yeah. some big time health benefits. And it's an energy source, you know, once you've been CrossFit. I may start putting that in my shaker before I hit the gym. <laughs> you need to. <laughs> yeah. Just a little dash of just an IPL or something. You know? <laughs> I don't know. That, the, the, watch the carbonation, though, on the, if you're using a blender. Yeah. May end, it's not good. <laughs> well, it may end up on the ceiling. <laughs> It'll blow up. It'll expand. <laughs> this is super enjoyable. I want to just... I don't want to finish it because I'm... It's like... But I'm going to... Um, what are the... What what hops... Okay, so when you're doing like IPL versus like a an IPA, like your breakaway, you, you describe it as a lighter IPA. But hop-wise, is there a different approach or... Yeah, I mean, the amount of bittering hops that you use, um, you know, when you start, you have wort, obviously, a very a super ref- multi-rich substance, and you're, you're trying to find that balance. And really, I mean, what is the brewer's goal? Does he want a big IPA that's going to be bitter up front? Uh, does he want the bittering to be subtle up front and carry through to the end? Does he want something that's just seriously hop forward with nose and aroma? I mean, that's just, all of that's taken into consideration whenever you're brewing an IPA, well, like with our breakaway. Uh, probably more of a pale ale, if you will, along that line. Yeah. Pretty light, easy. Uh, whereas the Saddle Time, it's a more of an aggressive hop addition. So uh, bittering hops, but yet 
more finishing hops that's yeah. really going to give you the nose and then it's dry hopped too yeah. to where it's really really going to be you're, you're going to have a really profound smell when you put your nose in it <laughs> yeah it's it it, it tastes and smells it tastes like i don't know it tastes like sitting out by a pond or something i mean it's like in a, on a, it's, it tastes like a sunny day or something yeah. it, it's good it's super refreshing so That's, we use some german hops in it some yeah. german saffirs and uh some summits and simcoes all right and that's kind of our hot profile cool i like it i like that a lot any consideration on canning that or making it more no, widely uh, we actually have <clears throat> excuse me we have label approval for a six-pack ipa sampler mm. and uh, we actually have approval for it for kroger and heb too we we just haven't got to the point of production yet it's yeah. two of our breakaway uh-huh. two of our saddle time two yeah. of our ride hard okay so uh, oh, yeah. uh probably the springtime is okay. when it's gonna launch into there because we're gonna be doing some bombers and stuff for the holiday months okay uh and that's probably gonna occupy our time yeah now i want to was it i don't know if it was last time was last time i was here you all right just about to start canning I, uh or, or may, may have been yeah so you started with the 5511 and mm-hmm. the domestic domestic wit and you have one more in cans, right? No. Nope. Or, the, or are they the bomb? It's on. That's, that's the only ones okay. that we, from a production okay. standpoint, that we can. Okay. So, since then, how, canning. How, how's canning? It's, you know, with canning, it's, uh, canning is a convenience for the general public. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, from a brewer standpoint, at least from cycler standpoint, uh, we don't see that being the largest way of the future for small breweries like us you walk into heb there's you know if you put your hands out there's only so much space Mm -hmm. so and there's tons of new brands great brands coming out all the time Mm -hmm. so uh you know when you have product in these stores it's expected to be kept up with Mm -hmm. uh, merchandised and you can't have empty shelves out there so we're just not the size that would enable us to be able to go into 35 hevs uh, and you know manage that product on a regular basis so probably what is going to happen with us is in the springtime probably more of the northern side mm-hmm. uh, you'll probably see our IPA sampler go in okay and that's kind of the route that we're going to take because our draft sales probably over the last six months have has really increased yeah so kind of focusing on that uh, Typically, what we see is, uh, you know, if I'm on tap at Josh's, uh, then next week I won't be. I'm yeah. going to be on tap at Abby's, uh-huh. and then I'm going to be on tap at Tina's, and it's just a constant circle. Yeah. Because people want to try different things. Right, right. So it's very rare that you're going to find someone that's going to have the same flavor week after week after week. Yeah. Uh, we feel like the future of our business is right here. Yeah. Right at our brewery. People to come see us, be able to take things home. We're a brew pub now. Yes. I think we were a manufacturer last time you were yeah, here. Yeah. But now we're a brew pub, so you can take product home from us. Uh, try a lot of different things that you're not going to see of ours that's uh, not out in the market. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. So how often, so you said the 12th, which is a week from this coming Saturday, mm-hmm. October 12th, 2019. Yep. If you're listening to this in the future, we're going to have you have to go to social or however and keep up with what dates. But... Uh, how often are you open like, currently? Is Generally, it, about once a month. Once a month to the general public. Right. Uh, and then you have your we do events. some other events and things of that nature, but uh, it's typically once a month. Sometimes it can be twice a month, but we announce that on social media. Okay. After we get our month's schedule down, uh, given the fact too that there's a lot of events, uh, we've got the Wood Forest Craft Festival that's coming up. Yeah. Here in a couple of weeks. Just last weekend, we had the Montgomery Wine and Music Fest, mm-hmm. which is. Uh, a nice event so those are held on the weekend yeah yeah so we're out at those so we're out in the market a lot too but we want to see you yeah we want to see the public and uh here's a quick segue real quick um the renaissance festival is is opening this this coming weekend and uh if you're in this area and you're, and you're heading that way this would be a good for the 12th would be a great place you don't want to sit in that traffic all day so coming or going what time will y'all be open on the 12th we'll actually be open from 1 to 5 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. all right so you can pick your spot maybe hit the Ren Fest up early they open at 9 a.m. you know go visit Alan at Brigadoon go see all the things get a get a turkey leg 
<laughs> go watch the belly dancers, get some baklava <laughs> in the Greek section, watch the joust. And when you're done with all of that, come this way. Come to Cyclers. Or vice versa, yeah. Come or, see us first. Yes, and come see if you're a fr- night owl, yep. you can head out there for the evening. You can do that whole you want to brave it. after dark. Yes. Beer's yeah. probably cheaper here. Absolutely. It's yeah. well, the Renfest, that one of the best places to people watch in the history of mankind to see the, how people dress up and first especially later in the day. But it's also if you if you love people watching and eclectic, you know, like atmosphere and just you hate money. It's the perfect place to go because you can get rid of all your money <laughs> super fast because it's <laughs> like in a heartbeat. You take your kids to the Rent Fest and it's like it's like mad. They do have magic out there. They will make your money disappear faster than you can say. Uh, bring out your debt. That's a, mm-hmm. I don't know. That's your. That's my. <laughs> I don't that's know. It. <laughs> so, fraud, fraud on your card. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Quicker than you could say uh, plague, like plague. Anyway, uh, but there you go. So because that's. Look, if you're if you're in town, if you're in Houston, if you're south of town, and you're coming up this way, you know logistics are what they are. You got to when you're up here, make sure you hit the high spots. Yeah, and you know when you do come out too, uh, we don't have any food at the brewery, so bring your own goodies. Bring your turkey leg. Uh, yeah, we we've got some nice chairs. If you want to bring your chairs, bring your family. Uh, you have a grill. Yeah, yeah. got a little grill that uh, actually love that grill. As a matter of fact, that mm-hmm. griddle. Abby threw a bunch of stuff on there the other day. We mm-hmm. just fired it up for the first time. Yeah. Big griddle yeah. that uh, did brats and burgers and all kinds of crazy stuff on. Man, I came on the wrong day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's available. Uh, you know, we've got some soda for the kids, too, on tap. Yeah. So things pretty much for everybody. But the main thing is just to come out and enjoy and come visit us. Yes. So, yeah, you got to pick your spot. You got to... You gotta, that's what I do. You know, I have kids, I have family. This is a family atmosphere. It's going to be, you know, it's, you know, you got the dogs. Come pet some dogs. It's a Bassett convention. It is. It was, they greeted me when you, when you get here, they will, they will say hi. And they, uh, sweet as they can be. Just, and look at them now. Just super enthusiastic about life. Look, I mean, just. They love it. High energy. <laughs> yes, yeah, so generally, um, we put that on social media. Yeah. So people can follow what we're doing, you know, on Facebook or Instagram, and they'll see the times. If they have any questions, they can reach out to us. We're certainly available for that. But that's how you know mm-hmm. when Cyclers is open. Yes. Okay. So, you know what? Or get involved in CrossFit or cycling or something. <laughs> you know what? You know, don't be like me. Don't be somebody who sits. Don't be a power sitter. Uh, I, you know, I was like, I took pride in that. I'm like, I, I'm one of the most powerful sitters that's ever lived. I mean, look at the look at the way I sit. It's just like, uh. It turns out my posture was bad because I did it too long. I should have been out cycling, coming to cyclers. Well, you know, here in the South, we we know about Friday night football. Those Friday night lights <clears throat> in the CrossFit world. It's uh, when this open is going on. Uh-huh. It's called Friday night lights, and all of these different CrossFit affiliates, and there's many of them. Yeah. Even if you don't do it, go out to a gym and just watch it. Yeah. Be there at about 6 o'clock, or the one that's closest to you, and watch the Friday Night Lights. Who's the guy with the six-pack of 5511 <laughs> over there just watching everybody lift weights? You'd be surprised. Yeah? Yeah, you'll be surprised. You'd be surprised. Is it a spectator sport? Uh, all walks of life. People of all walks of life. From of any age, too. Yeah. Uh, pretty, pretty inspirational to see, you know, I'll exclude myself from this, but the elderly out there. Uh you know, people are really trying to to get a grip on their life yeah. and, you know, kind of manage their health a little bit. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily think doing all this stuff is going to make us live any longer, but I think the quality of life, yeah. it helps us with our quality of life and be able to kind of manage our day-to-day stuff that all of us face. I think we all take all of that for granted. I think the fact that we live in the best time in human history to be a human, I mean, it literally is. You have the knowledge that we, well, health care. You know, if, if you need a new heart, they can put a new heart in your body, right? That's a thing. Like, people, that just happens. Livers, kidneys, all that kind of, lungs, eyeballs, they can do eye. Yeah. Face transplants, they do face transplants. That's crazy. Now, hopefully you don't have to have a face transplant, but I'm just saying it's a thing now. <laughs> but we know more about how to stay healthy. Food is, like, in here in America especially, food is, like, it's a ba- like um, overly abundant, right? We've never had this problem. We have too much food. But now we're, we're trying, we want, we've figured out, Okay, we don't want people to starve, so we, we kind of hit that here in America. Now we got to, let's get the best parts of it. And the best parts of it are 
you know, some of it's the, the craft beer and the locally grown stuff and the artisan restaurants that where people, you know, have the passion that we have that luxury now. You know, you can go to like a Thistle Draft Shop and get a, a 5511 and then one of their, you know, I don't know, the grilled cheese with the with the tomato soup or the or the what? octopus or the, ceviche. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Or whatever. Is yeah, that where yeah. It was? That's where it was. That's what Raphael loved. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, They've, I mean, this was it was it was pretty amazing. Yeah, but you know, food is social. Always has been. Always will be. And craft beer slides right in there too. Yeah, that, it's social. So good food, good locally produced product. Uh, it really makes for nice times. Yes. Um, and speaking of a nice time, I'm gonna hit I'm gonna hit this button right here because, I mean, we owe it to the podcast to try one more beer. So mm-hmm. I will hit pause. And then we'll come back with a beer and talk about it because it's a beer podcast. Interbrews. Thank you. And just like that, we're back. The magic of the pause button. I have an oak aged Saison that smells great. It smells. All right. Tell me about it, Clay. Tell me, tell me more about this beer. Well, a Saison, mm. you know, it's going to be more of a spring styled beer. Uh, some acidulated malt is used to kind of give you a little bit of that that funky backside taste in this instance we we aged it on french oak so uh, the oak is prominent takes a little bit of that that funky backside off and kind of smooths it down a little bit and uh makes for a nice easy drinking product now you've you've uh you've dabbled with the french oak numerous times it seems like that's a uh, it's a friend of yours um we like oak you're uh i believe it was at the your, the domestique I've had you aged it on a little bit of oak. We did that. We that did was, that. That was really pleasant. As I, it's um, I don't, I, I'm a fan of that whole whatever you want to call it, genre. I don't know, but the the oak. You know, it's like a lot of the big beers that's about to come out. Uh, there's so many things that's aged on bourbon barrels. Me and Abby were talking about that this morning because we're about to brew our our derailleur, our Scotch Porter. Oh yeah. And uh, which will be available probably in about six weeks for the market because uh, we're completely out of it. But I was asking him what he thought about, uh, you know, doing some, some sample batches with some different products other than bourbon barrel. Mm-hmm. You know, and his first thing that he said, I believe it was, man, it's hard to beat bourbon barrel. <laughs> and it is. There's so many great products out there. But, you know, what can we do that's a little bit different with the Scotch Porter uh, besides, you know, the typical bourbon barrel, cocoa nibs, uh, adding some vanilla to it, things yeah. of that nature. Yeah. So, people have even tried spicing it up. That doesn't turn out very good. Yeah. I don't think. I think rum barrels can. I've, those have, I've seen some. Those have been good. I actually, I, I'm a. I love rum aged beer. The problem is finding rum barrels that are in decent enough shape to use that you don't have to invest so much time to keep them from leaking. Yeah. We uh, we actually took our ride hard, our rye IPA. Yeah. You know, and we were thinking, man, you know, rye, uh, rum barrels, rum and rye. Yeah. Sounds pretty good. Right. So we got a bunch of rum barrels. What a disaster. Yeah. You know, they just, they leaked. We couldn't, we prepped them what we thought was proper. Uh, of course, there's barrel waxes and things that you can use, but uh, just didn't work for us on that go around. We haven't given up. Is it because they're handled by pirates most of the time? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they roll them around at people when they <laughs> bombard yeah. the ship. And when they pick them up, they got that hook for a hand, so you always get those holes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is funny. Well, you know, they use the rum barrels just a multitude of times, whereas bourbon barrels, they use them once. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you're, you're trying to correct a lot of usage. Yeah. And if you can do it, it really results in pretty good product. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love like just the 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 next layer when we're we're talking about, you know, pumpkin beers. It's just it's the same. It's like that's just another layer when you talk about you know the wood, what type of wood, you know, French or American oak or whatever. You know, it's like and then what was in the barrel before, like a Chardonnay barrel for like a, a lighter, like a wit or something or saison or whatever mm-hmm. with Chardonnay, even some red wine, red wine, you know barrels and stuff I've, I've had some good beers that have been aged in red wine barrels and yeah you know with fun. it's like with with some of the french oak barrels too with well with chardonnays and whatnot it can go one of two ways you know you can have that dry oak finish or you can get the buttery yeah. oak finish so 
you know, depending on the Chardonnay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I'm not a huge like Chardonnay in and of itself. I, I would never like be like, hey, pour me a glass. I would never say pour me a glass of Chardonnay. It's more like that's all we have. Yeah. <laughs> now, have you had a nice grilled fish? in the summertime with a fresh fruit chutney that's over the top of it Mm -hmm. and a glass of cold Chardonnay? I I can't say that I have. I would be willing when you... You might want to try it that. With the look on your face (laughs) and the way you present it, I would try it in a heart... Yeah, I would try it in a heartbeat for sure. Yeah, that's a Tina specialty that she'll make uh, and it's, it's more of a hotter weather yeah type of dish but, but it is really really tasty but wouldn't your wit with a little of that chardonnay a little mm-hmm. that would be pretty that would, spectacular too right yeah. mm-hmm. so. i've cooked with the wit before yeah like when we make burgers i'll uh you know i'll put it in like a little foil put some beer in it butter and garlic salt mm. and season my onions like that come yeah. out pretty good yeah and put those on the burger mm. so yeah. with the with the actual wine i'm trying to get you some points with your wife there so yeah, she, she does like the Chardonnay. She likes it quite a bit, actually. She she also likes IPAs, though. She oh. Loves, she, she's a huge hophead. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. I don't know if there's like a gene, like a Chardonnay <laughs> IPA. On a hot Chardonnay, maybe? That might be her. <laughs> I don't know. But, um, no, I would try it. I would, I would try most things. But, I don't know. I think... I don't know. I'll try it. What kind of fruit are we talking about in the chutney? Like uh, mangoes and mangoes, pineapple. Little, like, uh, little, uh, of course, you know there's going to be some other things in there too. Cilantro, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Onions. A onion, a purple onion. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little fresh yeah, jalapeno. Maybe shallots. Okay, a little fresh jalapeno, maybe. Yes. Or maybe a little, ooh, maybe even a little. Ha- I've been really into habaneros lately. Yes. I love the flavor of habaneros. Like, they light me on fire. Because they're super hot, or some of them are super, super hot. But the flavor. It seems like I tried a habanero beer here not too long ago, and it lit me up. (laughs) I I just, I knew it was going to be spicy, but I didn't expect it to be like, I mean, it was. Have y'all ever brewed with peppers? Uh We have not. Didn't Ballast Point make the habanero skull thing? Yeah, and then Lone Pint did did uh, like a one keg. It might have been just for like Firkinfest or something, like when when Firkinfest was still a thing. It might have been, it was like a habanero uh, yellow rose or something. Oh. And they'd use just the tiniest little bit. So you got a lot of the habanero flavor, like that, because they're super citrusy. Mm-hmm. Like they have a hot, like it's like, the hot, I don't know. It just, there's, there's a lot of citrus to it, but that flavor, I, I love the flavor. Yeah. And it just, it went well with those mosaic hops that they use. I don't know, done right, but I've, I've been putting them in my eggs every morning, like sausage and eggs. What was it that went so well with those brats that you made? Yesterday. What were you, More what were you having this last weekend? Uh, the beer. I mean, we had an array of things. But what did you use beer to cook them? Like that's tip, no. like a tip no. of beer brat. I have seen it cooked, like boiled in yeah. beer before. And then you put finish them on the grill or yeah. what, on the griddle or whatever. A little egg yeah. saute your your onions in there too. I think it's the one he was drinking. The beer the, he was uh, drinking. Yeah, the saison. That's right. Mm-hmm. We did have the saison. It it just paired really well with it. It saison's a great food pairing beer. Mm-hmm. Like it goes with a lot of stuff. I mean, it just I don't know. It's like the complexity of the, from the yeast or that. Belgian yeast, saison yeast, or whatever. It just it yeah. goes peppery, little something. It's a little slice of heaven right there. That's good stuff. It's a good it's summer beer. It is, right? That and the IPO you had. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this was a perfect way to say goodbye to all the hot, hot weather. Come hang out with yeah my friends and drink mm-hmm. some of their delicious beer. And okay, I'll throw up some mics if that's if that's what. It, it is exciting <laughs> as we head into fall. I mean, it, I, personally, I love the. I love the summer and I love the heat, uh-huh. but uh, this change is going to be really nice. You yes. know, going into the fall beers and being able to try some of those, and then going into the winter heavier products. Well, and the cool thing about the Houston area is you get to do it, and it's there for a little bit. But then when you're about to get tired of it, it's gone. It's gone, yeah. You know, we don't. It's not like a Michigan or Mon- Montana got like. They've already had like 40 inches of snow. Yeah, I heard that. That's I can't even like. Ridiculous. Yeah, they haven't got their Halloween decorations up, <laughs> and they've already covered 40 inches of snow. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Crazy to think about. That's like unfathomable. Fathomable. That's. Yeah, while we're talking about it too, as we head into the fall, uh, the beautiful weather that we're going to have. If if any of your listeners out there, uh, we want to do a science night 
here at the brewery here at cyclers go on there's there's no artificial light out here we feel like it would be great for it but uh we know a little bit about science but would like to have a a professional come out Uh uh we have some nasa scientists that listen to the the podcast yeah we would love to have them come out and uh kind of conduct like a little science evening i think that'd be cool can you i bet the stars out here are amazing it is absolutely amazing actually i just really don't know too much about the path that satellites take and whatnot but uh, this is a direct satellite path we have a lot of satellites that come over and you, little, you have to focus in on them yeah. but they come over regularly yeah. so and with clarity and i guess my point being is you can see that with the naked eye so someone that could point us in the right direction uh we think it would be really cool that would be cool i've got the app on my phone yeah we've got that one too so i could just come out and paint you know. yeah yeah i think mean, i don't know science but i got a phone the only thing that scares me about my app is when i put it down on the ground and it shows me things on the other side of the earth so that trips me out too i'm <laughs> like look i'm out. standing on scorpio or whatever or neptune and then i was like what's down there i was that, that was one question that my science teacher in elementary school i was like what's under the earth yeah and she's like what do you mean i was like well we're looking up what's down what's below us have we, has anybody explored what's under? And then she's like, well, it doesn't really work like that. Yeah. And then I just, I was like, I don't get it. And that's as far as I got. That was like fifth grade. So that's, <laughs> and that in the app. That's all I got. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so but, fall, t- fall time's great out here. Uh, the, the weather is going to be getting nice. Uh, you know, in the afternoon, typically the sun's out in this area, in the front of the brewery over here. And even during the summer, it was it was warm, but yeah. still there's a, there's some shade. But in the fall, it's just really, really nice. Yeah. So. Yeah. Sunsets are the best. Because yeah. they're, one, they're not as early as sunrises. I would probably look at more sunrises if they would schedule them later. Yeah. But they, but they don't. Like maybe around 6 p.m.? Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. If they would do that, I would, I, I'd be all about it. But it's so early. But, uh, and you can have beer with sunset. Mm-hmm. Drink a beer at sunrise and, I don't know, it's either you're really committed or we need to. Be, you need to be committed. I don't yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, well, okay. So, do, you said uh, derail. You're right. Coming out. Uh huh. That'll be coming out. Um. That's your Scotch Porter. Yeah. Don't you have a uh, um. Our big stout. The big stout. Mm-hmm. Our Palmaris. Yep. Yes. The chocolatey roasty stout. Yeah. Uh, that we have. We have a little bit of that left now, but we'll be brewing it again too. Okay. Uh, for those that like a little bit more of a roasty, robust. It's a good you know, fire good beer. Yeah. yeah. The derailleur is going to be Brick a little bit goes, more slick. Goes good with brick oven pizza. Yes. I said, there's like, that, like those times, like that roasty, it, it, it like kisses the smoky. It's not, mm-hmm. there's not, but it, you can almost like, it's like right there. Mm-hmm. It's like if there was a color, whatever the flavor spectrum, saying like it was a color spe- it was like, it would almost bleed over into that. Whatever that, the flavor, ver- I don't know what I'm trying to say, but it's, it's right there. So it goes great with anything like. Yeah. It has a little bit of smoke and fire. Yeah. Yeah. S'mores. So we get oh, into yeah. all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah. You know, for the for the winter. I love it. We've got a big uh we've got a big Belgian that we made. It's really a Belgian golden mm-hmm. that we call Belgian quads. Mm-hmm. Just to jack with everybody's mind a little bit. <laughs> but uh kind of along the cycling term. Big ten point six uh Belgian golden. It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. It's rich. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's got that rich flavor to it, but really good for when it gets really cool outside. I feel like the the Belgian style beers have been like uh, they're kind of under the radar at the moment, but especially in Houston. Yes. But I feel like they're due for their you know, their next. Yeah. Cuz I mean I remember when I was first getting into craft beer and you whatever there was like the six videos that were on YouTube at the time, you know, talking about beer. And they would talk about how great, like, the uh, the Trappist beers, the Belgian beers, and things like that were. And they are. They're great beers. But I guess they take a little more time and a little more nuance or whatever. And it's, I don't know, people, it's like, I feel like they're about to ready to come back around. Cause nobody, no, it's, just, it's a totally different flavor profile. I mean, the yeast profile is just different. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, the clove, uh, the banana, just that totally different flavor that you're going to get from that style of yeast versus an American style yeast yeah. um, is really what's going to set it apart. It's like our Abbey Mayo mm. that we made. It's a Belgian double. Uh, where we have it on tap, it does really well. But it's just 
the Houston community as a whole with Belgian beers, eh, there's just not that many of them that you can find out there. Right. Yeah, there's just yeah, there's a couple. I feel like it's about everybody's attention will turn to it. It's like when, you, when you're not thinking about it at all, and that's kind of what I'm going off of, it's just the fact that everybody's thinking hazy, juicy, you know, juiced yeah. that type of thing. And then uh, Abby and I were discussing it during our, our little break that, you know, I said at the beginning of the year this would be the year of the Mexican, the craft Mexican lager. And there's been quite a few out, and they're delicious beer, and they go great, you know, with Mexican food and everything. And they're great, just crispy, delicious beers. People are kind of seeing those. There's been a couple other lagers and things like that, but people are, they, I think we're currently sleeping on Belgium, and it's going to hit. Yeah. I think that's, you know, they're just too good not to. They really are good. I mean, I, I love them. I, I would encourage anyone that's going to try Belgians, or maybe you've tried them before and kind of shied away from them. Uh, give them a little bit of a chance. It's not something that you can take a sip or two and make a judgment on. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're going to have to sit there with it for a little bit and let that, that flavor grow on you. And not that you have to drink something that you just can't stand. It's just give it a chance. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, as it warms up and as it sits and whatever you're eating at the time, or what, it, it just it, it morphs and melds. And just yeah. I, just, I, I continue to use the adage, we've got a lot of friends from up north, and when they initially moved down here, you know, you want to take them to eat good Tex-Mex. And the first time you take, oh, my goodness, this is so spicy. <laughs> well, now guess what they do? Yeah. That's what they eat most of the time. Yeah. So first impressions just aren't always the best. True. You know, the best way to look at and it. And that's, if there's a drawback to all the beer available now, it's that people don't spend much time on one particular beer. You've got to dig in to really appreciate a beer. I think it takes... It takes at least two pints, maybe three, and then you got to come back to it again. You know, you. Re- I mean, you get. I'm trying to do more of that. I'm trying to dig in on a single beer. I don't. I don't. I don't want to be a, a beer hopper. Yeah. You know. Well, if you want to taste something, um, I mean, IPAs. IPAs are going to wreck your palate pretty well, so you can. They go with anything, and they're great, and I love them too. But if you want to try something of a different flavor, uh, y- you got to really judge it too on what you're eating. Yeah. So, you know, if you're going to eat one thing with, let's say, a Belgian style, and then you can have a totally different experience, you know, eating it with something else. Yeah. Yeah. Or drinking it with something else. It really does. Yeah. It's, that's, it's amazing mm-hmm. how much food and beer and those flavors and it just it goes. They're both great things and they come together as something completely new. It's kind of like IPAs. You know, some people that don't like IPAs, and I'll, I'll tell them. You know, do you like spicy food? Well, yeah, a little bit. Well, the next time you have a spicy dish, uh-huh. try an IPA and yeah. see if you don't have a different experience with it. Because, yeah. you know, it's the oils in the hop that cut the specific pepper oil of that spice, and yeah. it makes it a pretty nice, even match. Yeah, and those, I haven't figured out pepper oils yet because, like I said, you know, I've been putting habaneros in my, like my eggs, sausage and eggs every morning. Well, when you cut those things up, it reminds you <laughs> for like the next four days <laughs> that you just cut up a whole bunch of fresh habaneros. <laughs> it's like you'll start, you know, your your hands will get wet, and it's like it tri- like the oil is released. From, you can't wash it off. Like you'll yeah. wash like six or seven times, and then like two days later, it's like it just feels like there's like a an invisible like flame coming up off your knuckles or something. I kind of like it, but then you wipe your eye, and then you're like, I don't like oh, it. <laughs> I've done that. It's not good. <laughs> no, it's not. I love them, but at the same time, it's like. You know, it's a commitment. It's like a, like marriage. Yeah, right? you know, it presents a challenge too. Brewing with peppers. I mean, you got to kind of be on your game because yeah. it'll wreck head retention in a beer really quick. Yeah. So I, they have to, you know, brewers have to prep their peppers in advance uh, and really reduce, if not get most of the oil out of there. It's the same way with nuts. Yeah. Uh, you got to get the oils out of there and to try to just get the flavor in. I feel like those haven't been. Like, they were big, like, in 2004 or five or whatever. And I haven't, you know, there's a lot of, like, pecan beers and things like that. I don't feel like a, I feel yeah. like they're due for a they're reason. They're hard to make, too. I think they can taste a little watery sometimes. Maybe that's it, too. Not so much roasty or nutty. Yeah. 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 If you can get the imperial style with a pumpkin, or, excuse me, with a, uh, with pecan. Pecan pumpkin? Oh. Is that what you're an, saying? an imperial pumpkin, pecan. Pumpkin pecan mm-hmm. stout. Ooh, pumpkin made. pecan stout. There you go. Aged in a bourbon barrel that was used to age maple syrup. 
I don't know. Let's just do the whole thing. Let's do might, all of them. Might be good. onto something. Let's do all the flavors. <laughs> just get it all in there for fall. Why not? Just do it. Just and then jump. That actually in it. sounds pretty good. I know. I had ooh, uh, the brewery had their uh, the Vermont Maple yes. something. Mm-hmm. Have you had just in there? finished a bottle of that? Oh, that was good, right? That was pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That maple. Syrup, I don't know maple syrup. What's that? Why is that a thing? You know, why does that exist? I don't know, but I'm sure glad it is, and I'm glad we like have access to it. That's what I'm saying. Best time to be a human. It's the best. When else would you want to live? <laughs> uh, Any time in the past. I mean, you go to the Renfest, and you can now dress up as those old times, <laughs> but you don't want to live then. They would have just cut no. your leg off or whatever. <laughs> oh, you have a cold? Cut his leg off. That's what you do. That's what they did. I'm just saying. I mean, when else would you have wanted to live? You can watch Stranger Things if you missed the 80s. I just finished season three. Do you want, have you watched that show? Mm. No, I lived it. <laughs> <laughs> you, the Upside Down was in your hometown? Is that... <laughs> y'all had, you had monsters trying to... Big Brother was always watching. <laughs> it, this, I, I, I liked it. It was pretty good. But I'm just saying, we can relive any of those old times through, you know, camera filters and, and whatnot. But this is the best time. We, we're so caught up in arguing about stupid things. We, we're missing the point. It's great. You know, people can come to, to Cyclers and have beer and, and look at the lake or look at the pond and watch the sunset and see the satellites and pet a pet a bassin hound. <laughs> what else do you need? Look Abby, for what a else? Sasquatch. You can hunt. Have y'all seen Sasquatch out here? No. Oh, I don't think so. Well, maybe, but who knows? Come, come look. Some of the hikers that come out of the woods, though, they come to the brewery on Saturday. You kind of wonder. <laughs> <laughs> kind of smell like a Sasquatch. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, dude. There's there are so many hiking trails around here too. Uh, right before you turned off of 149 onto Osborne, right before there was a is a little park, and that's where they park. And some of the trailheads start from there, but they go out behind the brewery, and people come out of the woods. Oh, okay, this is where you are. Time. Yeah, yeah, kind of get turned around. That actually seems like a great a great day. I mean, it is. I mean, to appreciate it, to give everybody this is an audio podcast, so to get everybody the the the. The, your mind's eye focused it's like middle of the day and you can look in there and there you can't see the sun there's a lot of that 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 much tree and foliage and everything it's it's uh i mean it's dense it's the forest it's not it's not just the woods it's the forest mm-hmm. you know we're the uh, number one brewery in the national forest <laughs> how many breweries are there in national forest just one that's that's pretty awesome though yeah but yeah. we are though on the highest elevation point in western montgomery county a really? whopping 384 foot that's your sky high <laughs> i think my house is at like 120 and we were we were above like when harvey hit we we're like oh we're fine <laughs> uh so you don't have any, any flooding out here at all no now sometimes our water because of just drainage yeah. uh the the road sometimes it'll get a little water over it yeah but it's gone in just a few minutes yeah just let it pass, have yeah. a beer. Because mm-hmm. that's the lowest point as it drains towards creeks and everything and heads out of here. Yeah. So the lake is actually, it's just uh, naturally fed. It's not spring fed. Yeah. So just what rains is what keeps it full. Okay. Are there fish in there? Oh, yeah. What kind of fish? We got stripers, mm. red-eared crappie, yeah. catfish, perch. Mm. Mm. Haven't yeah. developed a beer with those yet, though. Cap, uh... Randall it through a catfish. No catfish porters, nothing like that. <laughs> yeah, that's probably good. I mean, I'm all for trying new flavors, but hey, they had oyster stouts, so that's true. And didn't didn't Texas Beer Refinery do like a crawfish stout? I don't know. Well, I'm sure it sounds familiar. I think so. I think so. And I would have tried it. Maybe they still make it. I don't know. But I don't know. Catfish. I love to eat them. <laughs> Beer battered catfish. Mm. Go. It goes great with beer. Yeah, yeah, but a catfish in in the beer. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'll try. It. I'll be honest with you. Maybe not. Maybe not. All right. There, you're experimental, but not crazy. Um, all right. So real quick, let's let's look back. You know, it's been like we said, seven years, six years, seven seven years since you've opened. Uh, 2012. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so seven. seven years, right? Mm-hmm. What well, was, um, I mean, seven years in the beer world is, uh, 
that's like 50 years in normal life. Uh, so much innovation change, so much, uh, you know, change in the, uh, I mean, just here in Texas alone, you know, you were one, like we talked about, you were one of six, and now there's, you know, 50, over 50, I guess, depending on where you draw the lines. Um, looking into the future, what do you want to do? Like, what is it, what, what are your ultimate goals? You know, we kind of like, um, we kind of like our operation the way that it is. We're not really looking to, you know, go, go hog wild, as they say mm-hmm. sometimes. Um, obviously, we want to keep our distribution out there, mm-hmm. uh, keep that rotation going well, pick up a few more counts here and there. But really, we'd like to develop our location here yeah. uh, and get people out to experience, come hang out, because we really think this is the future of where our collective business is in the craft beer world. Yeah. Uh, for the reasons I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, there there is room in the chain markets and things like that, but it's going to take staff mm. to manage it. So we just don't really want to go that route. You know, we'd rather keep it more streamlined, where we still have the opportunity to intermingle with our customers. Yeah. So that's kind of our goal. Yeah. Stay heavily involved, you know, in the in the sporting communities, cycling first and foremost, and the CrossFit community, uh, as long as that hangs on. So, yeah, yeah, well, it's not going anywhere. People love it. It's, I mean, absolutely they do. love it. They do. And who knows with all these other new brands and things of that nature, uh, flavors that are coming out, uh, people will be able to take a lot more product home. Yes. And I think the new laws have kind of benefited everybody. Yeah. So folks can take some product home. Do y'all do? Growlers and or crowlers? We do. We do growlers. We don't uh, do crowlers yet. No, we don't do crowlers yet. Of course, we do kegs to go. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Um, we have some bombers. Okay. Yeah. More bombers on the way. Cool. Cool. Uh, Abby, any um, styles that you've never, maybe that you've, you've dabbled in or looked at, but anything in particular that you think, man, I, I want to brew one of those. You got to try on, like a style-wise. Well, I've... I've been try we've been experimenting with the hazy juices mm-hmm. but he's not quite on that train yet. Right. So I would really, really like to brew uh a, a true hazy. And for me a hazy is like it has to be cloudy. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes I see some beers and they call them hazies but they're clear. Right. So to me that's more like a juicy versus a hazy. And then we've talked about maybe we have some uh well plum trees that grow here oh, yeah. maybe doing like a sour with one of those oh, i think cool. that'd be kind of nice yeah kind of refreshing cool. and different what style would you like a i mean i guess it could be just about anything like a belt you could age a like a belgian on top like you get some of that quad like the quads like that yeah. you get some of that plum like dried plum anyway that might be enough but ooh, you could do it like a saison with plum or you could do or these a, are a little bit sour so mm, okay kind of tart yeah they're good i like just to a eat sour them. have y'all like looked at any of that like a sour wild yeast any like have, I've, i bet I've, y'all got all kinds of i've cool mentioned stuff that flying around too. here we haven't introduced any any organisms to the brewery yet but right. uh the souring that we do is is naturally sour and we just kettle sour yeah anything that we do our viva la abbey that we have is an example of that uh not going to be really a true pugnant sour uh-huh. more of a tart dark fruit finish at the end so, with the wild plums, probably going to be along the same line, maybe a little bit more. What is it? So, they're tart, right? Mm-hmm. What color are they? Are they the purple like or are they more the red? Plum, red. red. Yeah. Depends on when you, when you when grab you, them. When you grab them. Of course, you know, when they're really deep purple, that's when the sugar content is at the highest point. Yeah. So, it'd be but nice But it's still a little them. sour. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Sweet and sour. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I dig that. It's like nature new. Like, you want balance. Yeah. You know, that super sugary stuff, that's developed by some dude up in wherever. <laughs> you know, it's like, kids will love it. We'll sell a million of them. But, like, it's like God knew. It's like, nah, it tastes better when it's a little tart, a little sweet. Check it out. Boom. So we've harvested them for the last several years, and we... Make jelly just, at them? Or yeah, we keep them when they're currently frozen right now. But yeah. So we're going to be piddling with it a little bit, see what we can come up with. Do plums have a pit? Is that what you mean? Like what's that? Plum? Does plum? Ha- does plums? Do plums have a pit? Uh, it, what do plums have? 
Yeah, like one big, like a stone. Are they a stone? I don't fruit? recall if these do or not. I think they do. They have a seed and mm-hmm. like one big. Uh, it's not. They're they're tiny. They're about that big. Okay. Super tiny. But it's one. It's not like a bunch of little ones, right? Like no, a it's tomato. Just one. Yeah. Yeah. So they're is that considered a stone Let's fruit? <laughs> Clay has one in his yeah <laughs> his pocket. He's no, gonna take it out of his stash. <laughs> What uh, any other? Uh, have y'all done any foraging to see any if there's anything else out there that you can? I would imagine there's all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, oh, there's all kinds oh, of yeah. stuff. They look like cherries. Yeah, they kind of do. They kind of do. Yeah. But you can see some are lighter. Yeah, I bet you could do like a like a stout with some of those, or a, a sour stout. Yeah. What else? Um. Yeah, so, I don't know. Yeah, just something. So, yeah, if the sour Age craze them. keeps up. Sour mm-hmm. haze. Something. Anything. Age them on top of those or whatever. But you ever make jelly out of those? Peanut jelly? Uh, no. We no. made jelly out of um, habanero peppers. Pretty good. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Anything else growing out there that you've forged and come across? Any herbs or anything like that? Mm. No. no. Say it. I don't believe so. <laughs> I'm not talking about that herb. I'm talking about there's more than one herb. <laughs> I meant like sage or I don't know whatever we have growing around here. Cilantro. I feel like there should be some wild cilantro or uh, thyme or rosemary or something. I don't know. Something. But uh, we make a. Tina's made a lot of pear jelly from the pear trees. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Kristen made some. The of spiced stuff. pears. Yeah. Uh, Right there in front of Abby's place over there, that, uh-huh. that one big tree. Yeah. It's a big pear tree. Oh. So Thought about growing hops. Yeah. That would be kind of cool, I think. Yeah. I attempted that for a year, and some of them, grow, they grow really well at first. They, they'll shoot up. Uh, we used the, the sea hops, you know, mm-hmm. Cascade, Citra, Chinook, mm-hmm. and um, something else. Comet Crystal. Hmm. I'll think about it. Mm-hmm. Should know. Cascade. <laughs> uh, anyway, there's another sea. Columbus Centennial. Columbus Centennial. Centennial. There you go. It was Centennial. Good job, Clay. Uh, they grew really well at first, and then they, at, towards the end of the season, they got just baked. Really, the sun. Yeah. So, and they were just on my back fence, and I didn't really know what I was doing. My fence wasn't tall enough. They grew. My fence is what six feet. And they needed to be like 15 feet. Really? They'll grow wow. fast. They grow quick. Yeah. Um, so. Typically, the vines grow about three foot a day. Yes. They grow fast. Uh, they look great, though. When they're green and everything, they're beautiful plants. And then when the hops start growing, it's like, oh, dude, hops. I we mean, were actually we're, thinking right out here in the V of the road. I don't know if you saw the sign where mm-hmm. it came in. Is that whole area making it hops. But it, just like you said, it's. It would have to be irrigated on such a regular basis. Yeah, it's and it's doable. It's just, do you want to? Because I know we have a a farm in the Humble area that we're going to be talking to on liquid lunch here in a couple of weeks. They're they're growing some hops. They're doing. Oh really? Yeah, they're doing uh, uh, greenhouse type grow, and so I'm interested to see exactly how they're doing it. And then I talked to. Uh, a guy up in Texarkana that has a brewery in Texarkana, and they, he tried to grow some up there on a on a farm, and so it's just one of those things where, I don't know, it's like nobody's really tried it. It's going to take a, somebody doing it for a while to really figure out. This all is that. not the hop growing region down yeah. here. You know, we say that though, but I feel like nobody's really dug in and really tried. I think it. they can be, by what I understand, they can be grown, but there's just so many variables down here yes. that are just not apparent in like the Pacific Northwest and the parallel that runs around the earth through Germany and whatnot yeah. that is just different. I right. Think mainly the heat. Yeah. It's probably well, too hot. It, it's some of that and then there's also uh daylight hours. We don't get as many actually later. Really? Yeah, it has to do with that. And then of course the temperature, yeah, does cook them. But I don't know. I feel like I mean there's so many varieties of hops. Yeah. Surely we can figure something because there's even apples that'll grow in the Houston area. Like well, if, I mean, if you reason, there's uh, citrus can be grown, mm-hmm. and yeah. some have quite good success with it down here. Yeah. And the biggest knock with that was fungus at one time, mm-hmm. but they're doing that, and I think that's the biggest knock to hop growing in our area is fungus. Yeah. And if it, that can be controlled, 
and we develop some hybrid or something. you know some hybrid styles here yeah that b- can become indigenous to this area yeah that would be great yeah maybe, maybe that can be the uh, science project you want yeah <laughs> yeah get the horticulturist out here yeah hey i'm a horticulturist uh, by day but a uh, astronomist by night <laughs> yeah so happy this was the perfect place for me to come and i love beer all right there you go there you found it um yeah who knows i mean to say that it can't I mean, maybe it can't, but we won't know until somebody tries it. Some crazy hot grower that Mm -hmm. just says, I'm going to just do it no matter what. Well, you know, the the thing about it, at the end of the day, you know, we love what we do and whatnot, but this is still a business. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it's got to be viewed that way. So whatever method anybody takes, that's the way you have to look at it. Yeah. I mean, unless you just got tons of money and to throw at everything. Right. So I think everybody just has to follow their niche. I know that's what we do. We just we have our little niche that we've carved out for ourselves. Uh, we're happy with it. You know, we enjoy the interaction with our customers and those that come visit us. And there's others that have their own niches too. Yeah. So we're pretty streamlined here, and we're going to keep it that way. Yeah. Well, it's a it's a beautiful thing you got going on here, Clay. I love it. It's um, it's one of my favorite spots, and it's this is always a, a fun. Uh, show i don't know why it's been this long since we've been out here but uh you blink a few time and years go by i know right but um i mean let's you know let's go ahead and pencil in the next time so we you know it's not so long we gotta you got too many good beers to come try <laughs> let's, let's just be honest with you i don't feel like i'm doing justice to your beer list there's so many good beers on this list uh the mexican lager i mean you know mexican lagers are delicious you know who doesn't love a mexican lager now that's a pretty cool name isn't it yes Yes, it is. Mi, milagre. 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 I've been, uh, my daughter is in uh, seventh grade Spanish. Oh. So she asked me to help her study the other day, and I was like, I, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, how do you pronounce that? She had to tell me how to pronounce all the words. So it was like, ah. Abby keeps me up to date on my Spanish here. Yeah. I, they didn't, turns out, uh, growing up in Arkansas public schools, they didn't push Spanish a whole lot. I did take half a semester of French. So there's that. So. Whoa. <laughs> Very nice. Do you want to try the uh, Mexican lager? The milagre? I mean, yeah. Well, maybe we... Do y'all have time to do, sure. like, just another little, like, 10-minute little bonus sure. episode maybe for our Patreon subscribers? Is that, that doable? That, Is I that think cool? that'll work. Okay. Well, we'll wrap this episode up here. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, in the, in the sound of my voice, do yourself a favor. Make time. Check the schedule. And uh, put it on your... Uh, your, I'm not going to call it a bucket list. Your pint glass list? I don't know. Bucket list seems kind of Your long. bottle share list? Bottle share list, something. Make it out to uh, Cyclers here in Montgomery, Texas, in the middle of Sam Houston Forest. It's it's literally a, another world that you want to come visit. Like we, Elon Musk is trying to get us to Mars. Don't waste your time trying to get to Mars. I mean, I'm sure Mars is nice this time of year and all, but you're not going to die coming to <laughs> cyclers it's fantastic it's right here and it's a completely different place than if you're in in the city and you need a little nature that's just it you need some nature you need some beer you need some good people and you've got all those here and abby will throw some brats on the on mm-hmm. the griddle so what else do you need clay i don't think there's anything else i think that's the entire list i think that's it that's it all right so we'll wrap here for this episode and uh it's good to be it's good to be back here clay thank you for having me back sure Abby, always welcome you. no problem and uh everybody it's good to be back uh back behind the mic so uh, we'll have more episodes coming up real soon uh, october just chock full and uh, thank you all for listening and supporting and uh, please support your local breweries and uh, look for uh 5511 or domestic wheat wit or domestic geek domet it's a tough one to try like two beers just try to say two beers and <laughs> don't Domestic wit. Uh, Very good. Yes. Uh, in, in cans, in stores, uh, hopefully around you if you're lucky, if you're privileged. And uh, get some of that and take it on. That 5511 goes so good with so many foods. It's That's a good. That's good. Uh, that's a good cold weather one, too. A it good, is. This is that. It's a good trans like weather transition beer. Yeah. Movie night beer. There you go. 5511. All right. Thank you all, everybody, for Clay, for Abby. I'm Josh. This is Inner Brews. This is Interbrews. The preceding has been a presentation of Stewed Productions.
Oh, real quick, this is where I remind you. Don't forget that Patreon page if you want to help support the show. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Oh, and uh, Renfest. Brigadoon Brewery, Renfest, going on starting this weekend. Go check them out. Bye-bye.